Ici pour la main. Welcome to this time follow up our presentation of Cramo PLC. Now it's time for our financial statement 2013 and of course uh, last quarter Q4 uh, presentation and results. I am Vesa Koivula and as usually I have here our CFO Martti Alaherkenen who will show up also and give some comments on our performance here. As usually, uh, in the material also you will find some, some highlights of our, our report, uh, more detailed information, and, and then I, I'm happy to uh, brief you somewhat about our focus areas uh, now during this uh, year 2014. And also I would like to uh, highlight some, some uh, issues regarding our modular space uh, business uh, sector. Let's start with uh, some, some uh, highlights. Uh, first of all, I'm happy to start this presentation by stating that in spite of the decrease in sales and uh, weak economic market situation in our areas, our relative profitability improved in 2013. Uh, particularly in the second half of the year. We made good progress in implementing our strategy and uh, consistent operating methods in, in, in all our operational countries. Also, cost savings of fixed costs and capital costs that were started already in 2012 have now improved our profit margins here in the full year result and as we have reported also in the, in the earlier quarters. Uh, by segment, uh, good res full year result was achieved in Finland, Sweden and Eastern Europe. In Norway, uh, the profitability improved and in Denmark the full year result turned slightly positive. In Central Europe, our tra transition program uh, is proceeding as, plan as we have planned earlier, but um, unfortunately the result remained uh, ne negative still because of very weak start of, of last year. So overall, <coughs> after a very slow uh, first half of the year, the demand uh, was uh, uh, starting to develop more favorably after the summer period. Market forecasts uh, uh, for this year are now somewhat more optimistic. I will show later uh, some, some uh, highlights of that. But, uh, and that's concerning for most of our market areas. Uh, but uh, the growth rate is likely to remain still moderate, especially in the first, first half of the year. Uh, my expectation is that the rental market to resume to growth uh, during the second half of the year. Let's uh, uh, look uh, some uh, of the, the key, key figures. Uh, Marty will, will continue more in details. If we take first, uh, first uh, uh, quarter four, so sales was down 5.1%, but if we account uh, uh, lo in local currencies and uh, exclude the restructuring in Russia, so comparable figures. So actually it was slightly growing, 0.9% growth in sales top line in Q4. EBITDA margin was 14.1%, uh, 
uh, clearly up from last year, 11.9%, and so was earnings per share, 38 cents, comparing last year, 34. Uh, we are very satisfied that we have continuously now been able to keep uh, uh, our cash flow uh, on, a, on a even strong level. Um, actually, in Q4, we made, we made highest ever cash flow uh, from operating activities, and it was 66.3 million euros. And this has been already sometime one of our key, key uh, targets. Uh, and it will be also, when going forward, uh, be uh, one of the very important targets. So in full year, this means that sales was 4.5% down. Uh, but again, if we uh, uh, compare uh, with comparable figures, so it was down minus 1.5%. So the gap was, in a way, towards the end of the year, it was... It was uh, 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 getting smaller. So uh, in EBITDA margin, this means that we made 12.2% margin full year, and last year, it w or a uh, year before, it was 11.3%. Earnings per share, uh, 1.01 uh, euros against 94 cents last year. And again, cash flow from operating activities, activities full year, 160 million euros. And, uh, good and strong level. Uh, one aim has all the time or, or some time already been also to uh, go down with gearing and now it is as planned going uh, down uh, now it was 72.9 percent uh, uh, and expected to continue to improve. Uh, with these uh, results, uh, the, the um, uh, board is uh, proposing that uh, uh, the dividend uh, for last year uh, would be 0 0.6 euros, which would then mean that it's clearly higher than, than uh, earlier year, some 42.9% higher. And of course, uh, fulfilling, cl fulfilling clearly our, our policy what comes to dividend payout. Uh, it's some time uh, that I have last time showed you uh, our sales uh, division by, by different segments. So here is a summary. So briefly, if we, say, we see sales by industry segment, uh, construction is representing some 55% for us and other industries 24%. And uh, this is a clear aim to, to, uh, to strengthen all the time in the area of other industry. Uh, and of course not losing the, 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 <coughs> the foothold in, in construction at the same time. Sales by product group, quite balanced. Uh, big, uh, biggest uh, product group for us is so-called tools, a lot of uh, different type of uh, construction equipment. Uh <coughs> and um, access equipment, 23%. Uh, and uh, modular space overall 27 percent. Sales by business segment Sweden is continuously really the clearly clearly clear, clearly the strongest and biggest market for us 48 uh, <coughs> percent. Followed Finland 15 percent and Norway 14 percent. So of course here <coughs> our aim is <coughs> to generate much higher growth in the in the future for for other areas than than Sweden, especially in the Central Europe. We are expecting that we could then have a bigger share of of revenue and as well profit in the future. Uh, <coughs> if we see briefly our sales curve, historical sales curve. Uh, as we have stated earlier, uh, of course, we have now back uh, in the history a uh, very high growth. Uh, every year, uh, growth rate clearly about 40 percent. Now we continue this operational excellence time of our strategy. And uh, <coughs> now sales was down, as, as, I, as I showed in the earlier slide. But now we expect that, that uh, it starts growing. Uh, based on the outlook, which I, I will I will show you briefly. In uh, for our EBITDA development curve, it looks very bumpy in a way, 
but uh, the fact is that now we have been able to, to increase our EBITDA by year already for several years and we are happy that now we could continue also in this very demanding market situation to increase the EBITDA uh, profit. Um, then if we have a look on general indicators of, of, uh, of uh, uh, market development during this year, first this is uh, the, the, the latest European uh, Commission uh, sentiment outlook. There are certain countries uh, where, where we operate which are having already higher sentiment than long-term average, as is shown here. And those countries are uh, good for us. Sweden is one of the strong, uh, and, and Germany and Denmark. But then <coughs> uh, Finland and, and Poland are clearly still below the uh, long-term average. Maybe now the positive, of course, is that, as is shown here, that uh, at the end of the year the sentiment started to improve. And uh, I think that overall uh, estimates are that the, this, this uh, improvement will continue. The ano uh, another thing is that how, how slow or, or, or quick this will be. Then, <coughs> again summarizing uh, the latest uh, outlook for construction industry in, in our operational countries. Uh, as as uh, we have expected earlier, Finnish outlook is somewhat improving, but not big improvement uh, uh, expected. Uh, I would expect that the improvement in Finnish construction will be m more than, than in the second half of the second half of the year. Sweden, um, for us, good to see that uh, continuously the outlook seemed to be strong, uh, depending on, on, on the, their, their uh, um, who is giving the outlook, so local is plus 3 and euro construct plus 1.6. But anyway, it seems that uh, con a con a construction outlook for, for Sweden is, is um, at least uh, uh, very promising. Norway, uh, outlook taken down from, from previous, now it's still strong 3.6. Here I would be cautious. We realized that, that uh, in the second half of last year, the uh, uh, market was somewhat weakening. So, so we are cautious on, on commenting this and we follow very carefully what is happening. Uh, we expect anyway growth, but uh, very difficult to say uh, how, how, how small uh, finally the growth will be. Denmark, clearly uh, a higher growth than, than last year. Baltic countries uh, turning now a little bit more negative. Uh, we are prepared for that. We don't expect any major problems anyway, but uh, uh, of course this is somewhat weaker market than, than uh, previous year. Poland turning now more positive. Uh, uh, Germany, Austria continues, as we are expecting, uh, quite steady uh, construction growth expected. Then if we see <coughs> the most important countries again uh, by, s by, by construction segment, uh, in Finland, if we say now two, 2014 here, it seems that now it, it, uh, their the, uh, residential con construction is just about to bottom and start uh, uh, growing, which reflects my, my earlier comment that uh, uh, second half of the year at least should then show some growth. Uh, the other sector which start uh, is expected to start small growth is, is uh, non-residential construction, whereas civil engineering sector will struggle uh, in, in this year. Sweden, uh, more positive as I said, uh, so it seems that residential construction is now continuing to grow um, so is uh, civil engineering uh, and actually also, also then uh, non-residential construction. So look, th this, this looks quite, quite okay. For Norway, as uh, I have shown in the previous quarters, all the indicators are up. Uh, not so strongly than earlier, but as I said, 
this, uh, th this we need to see a little bit with cautiousness. For Germany, for us, uh, uh, important curve is this yellow one, civil engineering sector. So in spite of the transition in our uh, operation, we are still exposed towards civil engineering sector. Uh, that's, of course, which we are aiming to change all the time. But the fact is, or the good thing is that now it seems that also civil engineering sector is, is starting to, to grow. Um, and uh, uh, residential construction seems to be uh, continuously also growing, as well as non-residential. So those, those were the most important countries for us, and, and, and of course we follow also by segment. Um, then, uh, finally, if I summarize what, what is the, the outlook for our own industry in Europe. Uh, so this contains all uh, the view of all important big, uh, uh, middle-sized, even some smaller construction companies. So, seeing the uh, curve left-hand side showing after uh, Q2 very strong improvement reflects that now companies are quite, quite much more optimistic about the market outlook. And uh, then summarizing uh, some of the most important countries, uh, uh, this and next year's expectation of the rental growth, so summary is that all seem to be now on the growth side. Also, Finland turning now to, to growth and, and Poland as well. So, um, this is the outlook at the moment. We take this, uh, the, our view is still somewhat cautious on this, but definitely this is more positive than, for example, last year this time. All right, then uh, uh, Marti will, will continue from this. Thank you, Vesa. Uh, to start with, like you said, despite the challenging market environment in 2013, we are pleased to report continued improving profitability and also a very strong cash flow for the Kramo Group for 2013, both for the fourth quarter of 13 and, and the full year of 2013. So let's start looking a bit more closely on our results uh, and starting with sales. Sales for the fourth quarter amounted to 175.1 million euros. There is a decrease of 5.1%. But like Vesa already mentioned, what is I think more notable here is that in local currencies and including excluding the restructuring in Russia, that is the for formation of the Fortrend joint venture, which went live 1st of March last year, there was growth uh, in the fourth quarter. Not very much, but still 0.9%. Segment-wise, sales increased in the fourth quarter in local currencies in Sweden, Norway and Central Europe, whereas declined in other segments. And overall, you could say that fleet utilizations, they were at a good, good level. Or you could say that up and until the December 20. Uh, and then, of course, as expected, we got quite a lot of returns for the Christmas holiday, but that was just an unexpected issue for the Christmas holiday period. And accumulated for the full year, uh, the group sales reached 657.3 million euros. There is a decrease of 4.5%, but sales change in local currencies, excluding the divested operations and restructuring in Russia, uh, the decline was only 1.5%. And, and what I think we can also see from this slide is that it seems that clearly that the sales decline is, is leveling, leveling out. Then going to the EBITDA, the Q4 EBITDA was 24.8 million. There's an improvement of 2.9 million against last year. The margin was 14.1. There's an improvement of 2.2 percentage points. This year, there were no non-recurring items in the fourth quarter. Last year, there were 1.4 million. So before non-recurring items, the EBITDA was 24.8 versus 23.3 a year earlier. There we can also see an improvement in the margin, 14.1 versus 12.6, so 1.5 percentage points. And what's important here, I think, is that the improvement in profitability that started in the second quarter of last year, that continued clearly in, in the fourth quarter. Segment-wise, our profitability improved in the fourth quarter 
in Finland, Norway, Denmark and Eastern Europe. It improved also before non-recurring items in, in Central Europe. In, in Sweden, uh, it was slightly behind last year's margin due to what I would call unusually high number, high amount of high, high service repair and also transportation cost. That was just because we got quite a lot of returns for the for the Christmas holiday, and 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 that affected uh, uh, the the last month of the year. But I don't think one should be too worried about Sweden going forward. The market outlook for this year is is much better for than than for last year. All in all, we are we are we are satisfied, like I said, for the for the fourth quarter performance, and especially considering the prevailing market. And, and I want to still go through what, what actually Vesa already said, but the two main issues uh, behind the, the improving profitability. They are clearly the effect of the cost savings uh, and the other efficiency measures that we have carried out. And second, but not of less importance, is also the implementation of our strategy and the must-win battles. And in particular, it's, uh, particular, it's the rollout of our uniform business model harmonized processes and systems and a harmonized performance management which we have taken down to the depot level in all of our operations. And in the picture we can also see here, which I think is quite nice, we can see an, uh, a clear uh, improvement profitability trend since 2009. So throughout the downturn we have been continuously being able to improve our profitability. And accumulated for the full year, uh, EBITDA or comparable EBITDA before non-recurring items that was 80.5 million versus 78.5 a year earlier and the margin was 12.2 versus 11.4 so there's also a clear improvement. And the first factor which I mentioned as a very important for the, for the profit improvement is, is shown here is that the fixed cost savings continued also in the fourth quarter of 13. Here we can see a fixed cost comparison as measured through employee benefit expenses, other operating expenses and depreciation, both for the fourth quarter of last year uh, and the full year of uh, 13. And as we can see, the fixed cost saving versus last year was in the fourth quarter, quarter by quarter, 6.3 million euros, and for the full year, 24.1 million euros. And it's, it's very clear that this has been an instrumental factor uh, behind the margin improvement. And what I think is also positive here is that, like, like also in the two prevailing quarters, that we can see that the fixed cost savings have continued in the fourth quarter in all those categories as, as pictured here. Then, uh, looking at our earnings per share, the diluted earnings per share for the fourth quarter was 38 cents, versus 34 cents a year earlier. There's a growth of 11%. And for the full year of 13, comparable earnings per share, undiluted, excluding the non-recurring items, that was one euro on two cents versus 83 cents a year earlier. There's an even be bigger improvement of 23%. And I could welcome in a few cost lines also below EBITDA, which are also affecting uh, the earnings per share. Uh, and first of all, I want to highlight that there's a major improvement in the net finance costs for the group. For the full year, the net finance cost totaled 14.9 million versus 20.2 million a year earlier. There is a decrease of 5.3 million, and this is an improvement saving of about 26.5%. And it comes from several sources, lower interest rates uh, and, and lower margins in particular. The group's effective tax rate for the full year ended up with 17.6, last year 12.4, a year earlier. We got some benefit at the end of the year from the fact that start of this year the Finnish corporate income tax rate will be 20% instead of 24.5 a year earlier and we had some uh, deferred tax liabilities uh, in our balance sheet and, and, and that, that balance sheet amount is valued with the new corporate income tax rate so there was a release uh, in the deferred taxes which lowered the tax rate. And actually we are reporting that as a non-recurring item, so the effect of this uh, Finnish corporate income tax issue was four cents in the fourth quarter. But still, when you exclude that, the earnings per share uh, before non-recurring items was 35 cents in the, in the last quarter versus 26 cents a year earlier. Because last year, on the other hand, we had non-recurring 
uh, issue that uh, uh, from the decrease in the Swedish in corporate income tax rate in the comparison period. Uh, then looking at our return on equity rolling 12 months, that improved to 8.3% uh, at the end of the Q4. Uh, like stated before, we are still here before below the group's financial target, which is over 12% over the business cycle. But I can assure that all efforts continue to, to reach the target level. Then next looking at our CAPEX. In the fourth quarter of 13, the group's cross capital expenditure was 31.2 million versus 25.6 a year earlier. That, that, as you can see here in the figure, there's a sliding, uh, slight decrease from the, from the third quarter capex of, of last year, but there's an increase year on year comparing the fourth quarter levels. This was all according to plan, and I, I think what we have also guided earlier. We can note here in the figure that there's a somewhat higher increased CAPEX level in the second half of, of 2013 compared to the first half. And, and why, why this has taken place, uh, like, like we stated also in, the, in our last quarter reporting, it's, it's the same three reasons. First of all, it's an improved outlook, particularly in the, in the Swedish market. Then is second, the further continuation of rolling out the, what we call the Cramo rental concept in Central Europe particularly in Germany with the best in town approach. And third, there is and has been continued good demand for modular space, especially in the Nordic countries where we are mostly focused. And in this picture, then you can also see that accumulated for the full year of 13, total cross capital expenditure was 129.6 million versus 125.1 a year earlier. There's a small growth of 3.6 percent above the previous year's level, but that comes mainly from the from the acquisitive capex, which was in the in the first quarter of 13. And at the end of 13, the group's investment commitments they totaled 17.3 million, most of which again was was uh, allocated related to the acquisition of modular space. One of the true highlights of of last year is, I think, is our excellent cash flow. Here we can see that Cramo has posted uh, really st strong cash flow throughout the downturn period 2009 to 13, and I think you can also see here is a, is a, is a clearly strengthening trend. In the fourth quarter of 13, cash flow from operations it was a record all-time high. We already mentioned it's 66.3 million versus 58.2 million a year earlier, and also the cash flow after investments was, was very strong at 34.4 million. Uh, accumulated for the full year, cash flow from operations, that was also a record high, 160.3 versus 146 million a year earlier, improving 14.3 million or 10%. And cash flow after investments, that was 50.3 versus 62.2 a year earlier, despite this acquisitive uh, uh, cash flow in the investment investment cash flow which which took place in the first quarter and again we we can see here a five year period twenty quarters in in sixteen of those quarters we have been cash flow positive after investments in the fourth quarters where we have not been in three of those it has been because of major acquisitions and then you all organically left only with the first quarter of oh nine. Another highlight really behind the excellent cash flow is that we have been able to continuously and to continue the improvement in our networking capital, which was a, another quite, quite actually important contributor for excellent cash flow. We started a program in, in late 2010 together when we also were launching the must win battles and, and now we can see the results have, have been paying off and are paying off at the end of 2013, the networking capital was 2.9% of sales, and that's lowest level ever uh, compared to previous years. And I should mention that in 2013, we, we succeeded releasing 10 million of cash uh, from our working capital base. And I could also mention that also in other measures, in, in terms of collection or uh, days of sale, sales outstanding, uh, all those uh, measures or the quality of our receivables, all those measures, KPIs, they improved last year versus 2012. 
very, very happy about that. And then finally, looking at our gearing and our capital structure. Uh, at the end of last year, our gearing stood at 72.9 and net debt at 365 million. Uh, there was major organic improvement in the gearing since uh, Q2 of last year, when it stood at 92.4. There was an increase then as we re redeemed our hybrid bond in, in April uh, uh, of last year, uh, totaling 50 million euro hybrid bond. But just looking at the fourth quarter, in one quarter between Q3 and Q4 alone, we could improve the gearing by 10 percentage points, and I think that's a very, very Achieve, good achievement organically w with your cash flow. And overall now the gearing is well below the group's target level, maximum 100%. Uh, and I can state that overall the group's capital structure uh, is sound, the financial position is sound to further develop the group's operations going forward. And the board is proposing a dividend of, of 60 cents, uh, an improvement of 43% against last year. Before handing it back to Wes, I want to close by saying that I think it's quite interesting to look towards this year. And I think there's uh, a good chance of further improving our, our operations all across. And I also want to state that all the group's programs, initiatives, they are targeted at, at, at further value creation. And some, some of those issues, Wes, I will further highlight later on in the presentation. All right, thank you. Let's uh, then continue with uh, some comments per segment, starting uh, from Finland. So it's clear that the weak market situation was affecting in our sales level here. But not, not only that, in comparable figures, we have to remember that we made these divestments of our modular factories uh, in the previous year, 2012. So by that, our uh, quarterly sales was minus 6.7% and full year minus 9%. But very positive feature here is that in spite of this weak situation, <coughs> we were actually uh, able to improve our relative profitability and margins year on year. Um, that was a result of uh, not only now uh, during this year made, made uh, adjustments and cost savings, but also uh, made uh, even earlier. On the other hand, this means that uh, now uh, referring to my comments on, on, on Finnish outlook, which is not improving very rapidly. It's improving, but not, not rapidly. So uh, this means that especially during the winter period, we are continuing to, to make certain cost savings. And uh, by that we also expect that uh, this year will show good results for fi Finnish operation, whatever then finally the, the market uh, growth will be. Demand on for standardized modular space has been on a, uh, on a, on a uh, stable good level. Uh, still about the margin, so Q, Q4 margin was now 23.4% uh, higher than last year. Um, and this gives full full year margin 18.8 percent, somewhat uh, high high also from last year. Um, I think we ha we don't have uh, exact uh, market share estimates yet, but we think that we have uh, strengthened our second uh, two position in Finland. And uh, as I said, uh, we are now prepared for for this outlook uh, for this year. To even improve uh, full year profitability here. Sweden uh, sales uh, grew especially in, in local currencies. So sales line shows in uh, quarter uh, in euros 0.9 percent minus, but in lo local currencies 1.4 1, 1 plus, and full year this means minus 1.8 and in local currencies, min uh, minus uh, 2.4. Uh, in Swedish market also, uh, as Marty commented, the, the start of the year, first half even, was, was quite challenging. And what we realized is that was that 
the, the market had uh, started to somewhat improve in the second half of the year. And uh, we believe that this will then continue as, as the outlook also, also is expecting. This means that the fleet utilization rates have, have been on a relatively good level. Uh, okay, as also Marty mentioned, end of the year was very sharp because uh, December was very, very uh, short this time. And uh, this uh, uh, was actually the fact why, why our uh, profitability in uh, last quarter was somewhat lower than last year. So we had 16.7% uh, margin, which of course was, uh, was uh, uh, not, not uh, satisfactory. Uh, so it was uh, below last year, and by that also our full year margin was now 17.5% compared to 17.9% uh, last year. So this was, this was caused by the fact that uh, there was high number, uh, exceptional high number of equipment and machines returned very, in a very short time in December. Actually, that is somewhat then affecting now when we start. So we have now started to, 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 to um, uh, transfer back the equipment and uh, uh, now we are, I would say, by week on a normal, normal level again. So we are, we are not uh, too worried about this. We know clearly the reasons behind this and when outlook now seems to be uh, as good as it is now, so, so we expect that we are like in a normal situation now, now in, the, in the first quarter. Uh, in Sweden, of course, Stockholm is the strong construction area. There is a lot of different type of uh, uh, building ongoing, uh, including also residential, as also like EM and, and some other companies have, have reported. So uh, we are ready uh, with our uh, structure to, to go forward and, and improve the profitability from here. For Norway, uh, sales was growing, meaning in Q4, uh, uh, in local currencies 6.5%, but in euros minus 4.8. Uh, whereas in full year, uh, uh, both uh, local currency 12.8 showing uh, good growth and, and in euros 8%. Eight, 8%. Uh, demand was on a good level. Uh, we have a lot of potential to improve, especially in the, in the I would say, southern parts, uh, Oslo area, where the market is on the other hand the strongest. On the other hand, we have been doing more stable profits all the time in, in the northern part of, of, of the country. Um, and uh, as we remember also now, now Lambertson and Grandpunkt and outsourcing is, is, is here. There we, we could comment that last year did not show as high sales as was expected. It is supporting our operations definitely. And uh, we expect that it will definitely support well also during this year, but it was somewhat slower, lower, lower sales uh, level what we, from what we expected. On the other hand, we have gone through now uh, big uh, changes in, in our organization in, in um, Norway. We have strengthened especially our sales forces, which we still continue to do. And uh, by that we expect that even though we are cautious about the final growth of the market, but, but with these changes we aim, of course, to, to improve our performance. This 7.3% margin is not, not at all on that target, which we are finally targeting. So, uh, year was overall somewhat positive, but, uh, but uh, we were ex expecting somewhat more. For Denmark, sometimes I have commented that sometimes for a, for a moment one should be satisfied with small numbers. So uh, this is in case of Denmark, uh, uh, remembering that we made heavy restructuring earlier, 
we took down uh, our depot network from 18 to 7, which we are now having currently, the number of depots. So sales was down in the, in the quarter 18.7% and full year 24.3%. Uh, but most important for us is that, that now we have stopped the, the loss making on a full year. So we made, uh, we made even slight <laughs> plus result. Of course, it's clear this is not enough. Now we have to find the next gear, next step, how to, how to continue from this. And of course, we have plans, plans also for that. We had some, some non-recurring items here, but that, that did not change very much the picture from, 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 from uh, reported figures. Uh, uh, one thing to mention is that now, uh, now when we are harmonizing our processes and one very practical important element is our uh, harmonized ERP system. So we have now uh, implemented our ERP system in Denmark with almost any problems. So it's up and running and of course that gives us good strength to also to, to control uh, uh, how the operations are performing. So we have a positive view uh, definitely to continue the improvement here. But of course, uh, winter period will again be here also weaker. Central Europe, um, sales continue to grow. Market is steadily growing there. Uh, unfortunately, civil engineering sector, as I showed the curves, is uh, still somewhat weaker, but expected to grow. Uh, our sales was plus 14.5% uh, in, the, in the quarter, uh, giving 11.5% uh, uh, full year. Um, profitability, uh, margin in quarter 1.2%, uh, too low, uh, lower than last year, and we made loss uh, on a full year uh, cost. Uh, from the uh, fact that Q1, the winter period last, last year, was, was very hard on our industry and on, on our operation. So that, that affected the full year result, that, that the full year result remained uh, minus. We have um, even put more resources and controls uh, when we go forward our transition uh, period in the operation. So uh, we have uh, uh, by quarter reported that this is ongoing. Now we can say that this continues, of course. Latest, just as an example, latest uh, new things are that new access hubs in München, Hamburg and Leipzig, they are now up and running, showing gradually uh, improvement in utilization and bringing us this revenue, which is, which is uh, coming from different uh, sector than civil engineering sector. Next new investments, uh, just to mention, we will, we will make for Frankfurt and Vienna, and, and then it takes certain time that also those start to, to bring us, us revenue and, and, and profits. So we have clear plan, clear follow-up, uh, what to do and when, and it we, and we just can follow that and the market is stable, the, the, that means that we, 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 we will be able to continue the improvement. For Eastern Europe, uh, sales of course was, was uh, down uh, because of this uh, 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 joint venture arrangement uh, with Ramirent in Russia. So uh, showed minus 32.2% and full year 24.8% uh, reported figures. Uh, EBITDA, on the other hand, was on a very good level, 26.2%, uh, much higher than last year, uh, full year 15.5%. So uh, with all the arrangements uh, in our own operations and in, in joint venture, we are, we are satisfied at, for the moment in this. Uh, the fact was that uh, we had good profitability in, in Baltics and, and Poland was clearly improving towards the end of the year. And uh, also in Czech and Slovakia we could say that in that very 
uh, weak market we we were we were surviving uh, successfully uh, for 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 trend performance as uh, we have told earlier sales was somewhat down from the expectations but uh, the profit has been on a reasonable good level and that has been now the case so uh, that means that finally the profit for the period was 2.51 million euros and, and uh, from the joint venture our share is, is then 50 percent and that was booked in 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 the Q4. So overall, also here we could expect that that uh, uh, we 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 are able to continue to the performance improvement, including of course the joint venture in Russia. Okay, that was the quarters uh, or the segments. Then uh, just highlighting uh, uh, some some separate issues. Of course, summarizing now uh, how we have been succeeding comparing uh, in the performance com comparing with our financial strategic targets. So profitability about 15 percent. We are not yet there unfortunately. All struggle continues to finally be there. So we are we are now somewhat below there. But trend is now now right. Gearing nicely below max target 100. Um, then sales growth faster than the market. This is so uh, for the moment uh, uh, imp uh, impossible to give yet. So normally we benchmark us with some 50 peer group companies in Europe and uh, for, for the moment we don't have those figures available. So, so that's difficult to say if we have fulfilled this target or not. We will report this uh, on this uh, later. Return on equity, as Marty commented, trend is is slowly improving, and we fight for that that we will uh, uh, reach then a twelve percent return on equity target. Profit distribution now uh, uh, this sixty cents, of course, that is uh, now clear improvement uh, from from last year and fulfills clearly our uh, uh, policy which is approximately 40 percent of EPS. So we are happy about that. Okay, then if we assess, uh, uh, we talk very much about must-win battles. That means that this is not only a, a, a something in the paper, it is a, it is a tool which we, with which we are driving the, the performance improvement. So if I summarize very shortly our outcome and, and objectives for 2014, rollout of renewed grammar rental concept that is ongoing. So we have now implemented this uh, uh, almost in every country. Uh, also new dynamic pricing system we have now, uh, it's up and running in Sweden. So all this continues of course now throughout the whole group including also this new new way of making the, 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 the pricing which we call dynamic pricing. Implement Kramo processes, a uh, very important part which will still continue is this harmonized or rental platform. Uh, yeah, I didn't mention that also in Germany now, in Central Europe, Germany and Austria, also the new system is up and running. And also the, the go live was, was done without any, any major problems, which was, which was very positive thing. So this is one element which helps us to follow up the performance improvement also in Germany. Uh, so uh, process harmonization that continues, of course. Develop Kramo people. We have uh, well in place training and career development program uh, programs uh, in all almost all countries. We say here selected countries. We have still some countries to 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 to, to implement that. And then we have implemented this one share uh, one Kramo share program, which which means that we hope that. Uh, every person working in Kramo is finally also a shareholder. This all uh, work continues. Uh, implement Kramo performance management. Uh, Marty mentioned something about this. This is now implemented in our countries, so the so system is there. In some countries it's working already very well. 
but some countries we we still and in every country now we we are then uh, sharpening how to use it so so the real results are are coming later so that work continues and then uh, modular space it's one of our must win battles so we made good achievements in Norway and Denmark we have been now uh, uh, improving there and also now we have a certain foothold all the, all already in the Baltics and Poland and actually now starting also in, in Germany and uh, going forward it means that that we we would aim to f strengthen our nordic one number one position and 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 uh, clearly now uh, go on with the planning how to how to implement modular space business in in other areas so what are then the real core or priority areas for this year uh, I think here is no surprises, but I want to summarize anyway. Of course, now it's the sales. So, so we, we do a lot of uh, actions in order to drive sales and customer excel excellence. You will see later on, we will, we will come back with some kind of new, new uh, we call it Kramo story. And that is not only a story for our people, it, it will be also very strong tool for marketing our our way of doing things. We will come back to this issue at least uh, latest in our capital markets day. Uh, dynamic pricing that is now very very uh, practical uh, change and practical uh, element also in in our our sales uh, improvement. Um, of course, our aim is now to maintain the cost base on a, on a good or a low level and further improve capital efficiency. So that means that we still go on with streamlining our cost base and even especially during the winter period search for additional savings. Uh, we say here maximize my sales with existing fleet. This means this is very much also related with, with our processes. So in certain countries we are we are extremely good in uh, in repair, maintenance, uh, etc. And in certain countries we have a lot of room to improve. So that comes by improving our processes. So high utilization, uh, of course, and, and reduce idle fleet. Uh, we are doing a lot of, uh, I would say, even improvements what comes to sourcing. So we have, we have achieved also good results what comes to, to, to purchasing, etc. And uh, we continue to have cautious view on new capex. Of course, there are areas now clearly where we we are now putting uh, growth capex, and it is Sweden mainly, and it will be Germany. But overall, we have very cautious view view on on new capex. So that means that one of the important aims is to generate strong cash flow also in the future. And uh, we want to mention again here that we are we are satisfied that now this this strategy tool must win battles they are now in our daily management so so as we say we we feel that we we continue relentless implementation of must win battles and uh, that's really working and and we we strongly believe that 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 gives us also results. All right, then I have mentioned uh, many times modular space here. I want to highlight a few things uh, uh, about our modular space operation. Uh, first of all, of course, we are, as we count, the number one player in Nordic, mod uh, Nordic uh, uh, market uh, for modular space. Uh, overall, modular space represents 27% of our, our revenue. But uh, we can recognize basically here two, two different, different type of, of uh, modular space uh, uh, businesses. Uh, on the left hand side uh, we have so-called construction modules, which are, someone is calling them side huts, some, have, some, some countries porta cabins. These are those, those elements used for on the normal construction sites. 
and that represent, represents about 14.4 percent of our group revenue. So giving us around 95 million uh, euros in sales. Of course, uh, lease periods are longer than, than, than equipment rental normally, but on the other hand, they are, they are uh, somewhat shorter than, than, than the uh, non-construction models. Um, then talking about the non-construction models, which is the most, I would say, interesting part for us, and where we also differ in most of our competitors. And this is the one which we are focusing more and more our efforts to improve in the existing markets in Nordics and also bringing this business now in other areas as well. So far this gives 12.3% uh, of our group revenue. And um, as described here, uh, we, we have there a harmonized fleet uh, and uh, we have specialized standardized systems for different applications. It can be accommodation application, it can be daycare, school, etc. And that is where we put now more and more efforts to, to improve here. Um, this gives us at the moment 81 point, uh, million, million uh, euros in sales and invested capital year-end was 192 million. Uh, lease or rental periods are long here. They are several years in any case. And uh, uh, we have some 15,400 modular units in our fleet. And why we sold factories? And at the same time, these, let's say, tailor-made uh, modular contracts. The fact is that uh, we don't need our own factories. We are a specialist company for rental. So that, that gives us, us, us possibility to concentrate more in rental. And why we don't want these tailor-made contracts is that we have this harmonized fleet now, harmonized systems, and we can use this also cross-border. So, so in most cases, the modules can be used in different countries. So this gives us in the future more, more and more strength when, when we have really harmonized fleet, which we use and we can put all our efforts in, in rental of standard systems. Uh, then uh, just summarizing that uh, how this has been performing. So one could summarize that it has solid growth as seen here compound uh, average growth rate has been 6.3 percent. Maybe one question arises here is uh, last year two first quarters show so uh, uh, growth and then it's decreasing. Uh, those two quarters include some uh, extraordinary income or, or, or high revenues from Copenhagen Metro project. So one project was affecting quite high peak there. But we expect that this, uh, this stable growth will overall continue also, also in the coming uh, quarters and years. Uh, end markets, so public sector represents here some 58 percent and uh, other industries 37 percent and construction industry only 5 percent. That is also one reason why, why this is very good fit in, in our strategy. So, uh, what are the their, uh, important features then, then uh, achieved and, and, and uh, strategic initiatives going forward? For last year, we are number one in Nordic country, countries. Now we have established a foothold also in some, some other countries where we see that there is great potential to, to grow. Uh, we have long long track record in modular applications. And what is important is that th by that we are very strong. And it's very difficult to start this as a new company. It's, it's very difficult. This is a long-lasting process that we have achieved this this knowledge and know-how what we have today. So we have a unique concept which is uh, based on, on this standardized modular space. 
and uh, we have high customer satisfaction and long-term relationship with our our clients especially here in here in nordic countries and especially in sweden and finland and uh, uh, last maybe not least anyway is that also here we have a, a, a group-wide rental platform, so it's it's not exactly the same than um, uh, equipment rental, but also this we have now implemented. And uh, what we are going to do then uh, going forward, of course, strengthen our positions, expand to uh, other countries, uh, continue harmonizing processes, which gives uh, us more efficiency here, and. Uh, uh, a thing which we will come ba come back also in the in the maybe next co next uh, uh, reporting period is that we will also launch here a new kind of new branding a new way of marketing this. That's something which is coming up. Okay, and now when it's uh, <coughs> full year, so um, I thought maybe it's good to wrap up also some some a summary of our share performance first i would like to state that share turnover has been on a on a very high level uh, after september which means that there has been a good uh, liquidity on our share and uh, i think this is shown also that uh, uh, the foreign ownership has been increased uh, uh, during the year. So it was earlier 23% in the beginning of the year and now it's uh, some 42%. Uh, so, uh, and here is also the summary. No big changes here in, in, in the top 10 largest shareholders uh, at the moment. Okay, then it's uh, time to wrap up the whole thing. Uh, we state that the economies in the Eurozone are estimated to take an upward turn in 2014, as, as, I, as I commented earlier, and uh, we expect that particularly the second half of the year will be the time which shows the growth. There are still market-specific differences, especially in the construction sector, and uh, in the long term, equipment rental industry and market is expected to grow faster than the construction market. I think we are now going in, in most of the countries in that phase that construction start to grow and we will see that our industry is growing somewhat faster, in some cases much faster. And also our own industry is, equipment, is expecting that that uh, in our markets now the growth ha has started. Not high growth, but slow growth. And uh, I read exactly the guidance which we uh, uh, decided to give. So we say that in this year, 2014, uh, groups EBITDA margin will continue to improve compared to 2013 and uh, Gramo Group sales is also expected to grow in uh, 2014. However, exact sales ex exposed to changing exchange rates. Uh, exchange rates is mentioned here because uh, uh, suddenly there has been already, especially in, in SEC and NOC, uh, rapid changes uh, and, and uh, that we cannot not control. All right. Uh, from this, it's good to continue this year, uh, has started very, very ra rapidly, I would say, but uh, with these comments, we are, we are ready to fight for this year and we really believe that we can continue the improvement. Thanks for your at attention and, uh, of course, now we can take questions. Please. Artemileski SCB, I have three questions. So, first is on CapEx outlook for this year. Uh, how do you see it, it, it developing? And uh, then, secondly, your thoughts regarding MET and uh, outsourcing deal potential right now, and, uh, and maybe lastly on pricing. So, how do you see picture for this year? Yeah, yeah as I mentioned earlier here, uh, we have cautious view on increasing CapEx. Uh, mm -hmm. 
seeing now uh, a realized capex last year we expect that we will somewhat have to go higher and of course we we <laughs> we hope even that the the market shows uh, uh, such a uh, uh, growth that that we need to to even increase the capex but we are talking about not big increases uh, uh, compared to this uh, last year and the areas most probably where we have to uh, make growth investments Sweden and, and, uh, and Germany. Uh, MTA, uh, we have said that our, we, we are now strategically in, in, in those countries where, where, where we want to be. So we are not, not targeting any, any new countries or, or uh, acquisitions in new, totally new areas. But uh, even we hope that we could make some Bolton acquisitions in, in the existing market areas and that's what we are looking for in different areas which would bring us a local strength so that we could uh, be this best in town rental company in those places where where we could then hopefully uh, make some some acquisitions smaller ones and uh, pricing yeah uh, very, not very much to comment on pricing, uh, and that concerns all the countries. Uh, in my main markets, Finland, Sweden, uh, it's of course a tough situation. Uh, that's because of the winter period, but I would say that that, that is not nothing uh, um, unexceptional. So every winter we face that it's tough pricing situation. So we expect that that then this will be no more like a normal normal uh, uh, year what comes to pricing and of course we are we are carefully following up that when it would be time to uh, increase the prices but for us very important element in this pricing is this dynamic pricing system because that that really then then uh, starts to now to to work and and and, and give us uh, certain price improvement also so uh, in a way i feel that what comes to pricing we are you know a little bit like like now waiting for for the the season to start okay thank you Robin Santaverta, Handas Bank and uh, regarding fixed costs uh, are you happy with the with the current level or or in this environment uh, or do you still strive to, to decrease or take down the, the fixed cost level in 2014? Is that even possible? Uh, overall, we are, are uh, quite satisfied. As we have seen that we have uh, reached uh, good savings in fixed costs. Uh, but there are areas wh which need... Uh, when we say that streamlining, that means normally taking down fixed costs but especially during the winter period now we are we are now having already in place those actions especially in Finland so we are really now saving in our fixed cost also during the winter period so uh, uh, we don't have so much room than for example one and a half years ago because we have already achieved good levels so maybe one could say that we are we are satisfied but we are controlling them now very carefully. And uh, then about uh, past Finland and, and no Norway, uh, what is happening on, on, on these markets? Your uh, competitor uh, issued a profit warning statement that demand has been much, much weaker. Yeah. Are you taking market share? Is it some sectors that you are exposed to that uh, is performing be better? Could you comment a, a little bit more yeah, about of these course, two markets? Yeah, this is hard, hard to comment. I, I can try to comment, of course. So, uh, so first Finland. As we see, we have now been able to make uh, good performance, but market is, is 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 has been going down. It has been really tough market situation. So, uh, by that we are satisfied that we we succeeded as we did. Uh, so market is really difficult and uh, why we are implementing just now also this extra 
cost savings here in, in Finland is that the market is just now also very weak. But we expect that it will be easier than later on this year. Um, I don't comment on behalf of Ramirent. You will <laughs> you will see uh, 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 hear what they are commenting. This is our our situation. What comes to Norway, we realize that uh, uh, in the in the fir last quarter, uh, especially, somewhat weakening of the market has happened. Uh, then why it's so difficult to judge what does this mean is that the, the outlook was so strong. It was so big, uh, big plus and, and I have said here that for us, uh, if we can implement our improvements, uh, smaller uh, growth is enough. Okay, now the outlook is somewhat weaker. So, uh, uh, I said already that we are very cautious on, on, on Norwegian uh, market development. So. It's very difficult to say, but anyway, we have to remember that that everyone is still forecasting good plus growth. Good, thanks. Uh, Johannes Krasberger, Nordic Markets. I've got a few questions. Also, um, basically, on first on on cash flow, uh, capex was already asked, but uh, what about depreciations? 2014, any? Word of that. No big changes, uh, no changes in depreciation policies what, whatsoever. So, if we will have somewhat higher capex, mainly because of Sweden, Central Europe, and, and the modular space, of course, maybe just slightly higher depreciation for this year compared to last year. Okay, and uh, then uh, networking mm -hmm. capital, uh, are we? starting to see the bottom or are you still able to cut that down? Well, we are investigating, could we, could we even move to negative territory? Uh, we haven't, that's no external target, but we, there is still some potential, but let's see what we can do. Uh, it's, it's, of course, networking capital release is one issue. The other issue is, is other, other KPIs with your quality of your receivables and and, and how fast you collect days of st st sale outstanding, etc. But as I mentioned, all those have also moved towards the better. So, so we are we are we are very satisfied on that on that area. Uh, I would comment that yeah, we have still some room, but of yeah, course, but we are so satisfied with the curve which we have. So, so that cannot c continue with this pace. But I would I would comment this is continuous improvement and strict control. That's. Uh, but if I just mentioned, we have actually succeeded all across the countries. But for example, in Finland, we have a lower DSO than in Sweden. It's a large market, so if we can there further go and improve it, it should also some improvement going forward as well. Of course, then if if a big growth starts, that then that may need some some networking capital as well. That's that's an issue to take into account, of course. Uh, okay, um, then I've, I think I've asked this before also, but uh, I'm just really interested on what's going on in Germany and with the equipment mix. Okay, you said you have this uh, plan already laid out, but uh, maybe is there any way to open that? Because obviously why I'm interested is that uh, if you will have less uh, construction machinery, that I suppose should improve your margins in the future. And uh, Obviously I'm interested when that will happen. <laughs> That's obvious question, and of course it's painful to report that yes, we have <laughs> we have plans in place, uh, but really we are doing so many things there there in order to 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 make it happen, and also to control that we are doing the right things. So um, uh, I think um, uh, latest in capital markets day, of course, we have time to open it more. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, we have very clear plan to to do. But of course, what counts is what will be then the figures. We have. I want to continue really a three-year very clear plan, and and going organically. Okay, there will be some some bolt-on acquisitions coming coming as well o on the side in terms of resourcing, controls, everything. We ha we actually also. Maybe you didn't mention, but we successfully launched the group's harmonized rental platform in the early January of this year. 
and that's a huge step for our, our, our German operations to be able to improve efficiency and to have all the controls down to the depot level with the same standard as, as we have in the core, core Nordic markets. And we are continuing with, there, for example, with benefit harvesting in terms of the processes at this very moment. And then we have these rollouts of new fleet, uh, new sales effort, customer excellence. It's, it's a whole arsenal of, of, of core initiatives with a, with a monthly follow-ups. And uh, the market outlook is also quite interesting, I think, for, for that market. So we will definitely be doing our best. Uh, okay, uh, and two questions more. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, the guidance improving EBITDA margin, if I just calculated correctly on a reported basis, uh, the margin improved by one percentage point um, last year. And I guess most of this is through fixed costs, and now you're relatively happy with that level. Uh, any any uh, uh, sort of uh, wording or... And uh, thoughts, uh, how much the EBITDA margin could be improving this year? Uh, obviously, we cannot give the figures, so uh, this is our guidance now that we continue to improve. All right, and then the last one is, um, just reading through the press release, I saw this uh, Belgium residual tax um, decision um, from the authorities. Um, just maybe a few words on that one, uh, what, is, what is going on? and. Uh, uh, what, what are your thoughts about this? About yes, this? yes, we got a, a, I would say, very unfortunate and surprising decision from the Finnish Tax Authority in Q4, uh, 9.7 million, which includes all the kind of interest on top. And for that amount, we have already paid taxes in Belgium, where we have a, a internal treasury bank, and, and uh, so the kind of net exposure is not as big because we have paid. Uh, it's, it, all, all our uh, advisors are saying this is a very clear case where, where the, it does, doesn't have a, uh, any, any clear grounding and, and we will appeal. We, we have not recorded uh, that amount through the, through the P&L. Uh, uh, any, anyhow, uh, it, it will probably be a lengthy process. There have been some some cases now in the also in the media, so unfortunately there seems to have been a total change in in in, in the Finnish tax uh, administration's behavior and uh, how they try to maximize on issues. Just assuming that okay, um, you need to uh, pay this tax, and, and then the cash cash impact will be smaller than the ten million in that case. Yeah, yeah, uh, because yeah. we have already paid, but I mean that's the maximum exposure, but we have also paid taxes already. I don't mention how much they are, but the net, net maximum exposure lower. Uh, we will, uh, however, pay pay that amount in, in, or actually we have already paid it in Q1, so it will show a little bit in our uh, operating cash flow for the first quarter. But this is not nothing to do with the, with the appeal process. This is just to be safe from potential other interest uh, occurring for that. It's better to uh, handle it that that way. Okay, thank you. All right. Any more? Tom Ratilainen from Billing Investment Research. Uh, still coming back to the guidance, one clarifying questions. Uh, question. Uh, it's str uh, strongly stated that you expect EBT margin to, to improve. So, uh, 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 so, do you expect to improve EBIT margin independent of, of the growth in uh, in sales? Yeah. So we we <laughs> we we expect EBITDA margin to grow. Improve. Uh, yeah. Improve. Yeah. Improve. They are not linked. They those, are, yeah. those two sentences. Okay, and the uh, second question regarding the modular space business and, and uh, especially Germany, you have now is established operations there. So uh, how do you see the competitive situation in modular space in, in Germany and uh, what, what are your main competitive advantages there, uh, especially in, in Germany? Yeah, of course this, uh, when we say that we have certain foothold, it's, it's of course very small. Now we have delivered first school there and now we are looking for, for further uh, possibilities to expand. 
Uh, we have made certain research and uh, it seems that there is a, a big potential in this area. There are some big companies making good profits there. Um, but on the other hand, uh, all our research is so that there is uh, a big need of also our type of like school school uh, applications. So uh, based on these these uh, researches, we have decided to go for. But of course, this is all too early to to start um, uh, very much estimating yet. So we will report more when we when we go forward and and. One possibility is to really make certain certain acquisitions also this in this area. But uh, is, is it mainly that the uh, buyers of modular space there are, are expecting uh, uh, more competition, more more uh, suppliers there? Uh, as uh, our our studies show that we have good room for that, yeah. And we have now find, found immediately some good clients also. So obviously there is then, then room for, for our, our way of doing models as well. Our studies show uh, uh, good demand uh, and, and a healthy market. But of course you need the competencies and have to evaluate what's the right mode of, of, of entering in larger scale. Yeah. And of course uh, our entering there is based on our long long uh, knowledge and know-how and supported, of course, our operations from Nordics. Thanks. All right. Any more? Was there anything from, from web? Yes, mm -hmm. <coughs> there's one question from Ari Järvin at Danske Bank Markets. Uh, you expect general growth starting from H2 this year. Do you see room for sales growth in Sweden in H1? Yes, yes we do. That's clear <laughs> answer. Yeah. And if I'm very... Uh, just what you state in your comment, it's yeah. in, in the second half of the year at the latest. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, adding, for adding that which is in the, Ari, in, in Ari, the commentary. Yes, yes uh, especially in Sweden we see possibilities to <coughs> grow already uh, before second half. No further questions. All right, then it's time to thank you for all and uh, see you next time here. Thank you. Thank you.